Bow Hunt or Die is being brought to you by Matthews, Lost Camo, Lone Wolf Portable Tree Stands, Hunter Safety System, Heartland Wildlife Institute, New Archery Products, Tinks, Carbon Express, Stealth Cam, Moose Utility Division, Lacrosse Footwear, Scent Blocker, Pine Ridge Archery, HHA Sports, Stick and Pick, and the Can Cooker. Welcome to another exciting episode of Bowhunter Die. You know, before we get started with this week's episode, we've got a special guest with us today. We're actually filming this live at the Matthews Retailer Show, and I'm with my friend Dave Watson, host of Matthews TV. Dave, how's it going? It's going well, Todd. How are you, buddy? Good. You know, the show's been great. I mean, a lot of people are excited about some of the new huh? products in Lost Camo, seeing all kinds of new stuff. Yep. Everything keeps growing and growing. Uh, the Matthews Trade Show uh, first started out, it was just a few dealers and a few vendors, and now look at, we've moved into the giant dome now. It's just, it's turned into its own uh, special event that people look forward to, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Now, Dave, you know, one thing I know that people are always interested in hearing about is how people get started within the hunting industry. Now, right. I know, you know, for me, this is almost my 19th year now, and I know I met you years ago. Yeah, about 19 years ago. Right, right. <laughs> And uh, I guess, how did you get started in this industry? In the hunting industry? Yes. Um, well, I had a head start. I was, I, I kind of cheated a little bit that, that I'd always been a bow hunter. I'd always been a musician. I was playing bass guitar for the Oak Ridge Boys. And of course I lived in Nashville and TNN was based out of Nashville. Then TNN was a huge network back then. And I got to know all the guys on, at TNN. And then when I, when I made my first hunting video in 1996, the guys at TNN saw it and said, hey, why don't you host a, a TV show? That's and great. I thought, gosh, I'm gonna go, I'll, I'll, I'll switch and quit playing guitar and start hunting full time. So it's worked out really well. So, so how many years is that for you now? I've been on air 16 years. Man, it's unbelievable how quick time goes, 16 years, yeah, it was, it's, uh, it's been fabulous. It, it, it's always an adventure, it's always a challenge. Uh, for example, this year, I haven't, I haven't shot an animal yet. It's middle. Oh, I, you know, I may, have to, I may scoot away here a little bit. Now, I don't want that. You look don't want that. You don't want that look on me. Yeah, it's mid-December. I've been on three elk hunts. I've been on four whitetail hunts, and I have not knocked an arrow. Well, one thing for certain. Listen, this is Dave Watson. Dave, I've seen you with enough high-quality animals. I know there's still time left. You're gonna, yeah. you're gonna get an arrow off at something. That's yeah. for sure. We're just gonna have to work a little harder and and uh, take time off for Christmas, of course. But other right. than that, it's it's full-time hunting. Well, we definitely appreciate you taking yeah. time in your busy day to stop by and see us and you know yeah. be a part of our show. I know there's been several times when you've hosted some of my hunts on your show. Yeah. We're appreciative of that. We love having you guys on because most of your hunts are, are, are self-filmed, right. which I do a lot of. And I, and I always like to see other people do that because it's, it's the ultimate challenge. If you, can, if you can shoot a mature whitetail with a bow, that's excellent. If you can shoot a mature whitetail with a bow and capture it on film yourself, that's really accomplishing something. Well, I, I, there's one thing for sure. I know it adds a whole other <laughs> level does. of excitement and challenges, and I'm glad that you actually, you know, you know, recognize that and say that. Yeah. So, Dave, I really appreciate you taking the time to come by and see us. With that being said, guys, let's join Justin now in the studio for this week's adventure. Hey, thanks, Todd. You know, that was great of Dave to stop by the booth at the Matthews Show and do an interview for us. Now, if any of you guys are interested in watching any of the great hunts on Dave's show, make sure you check out an episode of Matthews TV this year. Now, before we get into our hunts for this week's episode, one thing I did want to tell you about is some of the great new bowhunting.com and bowhunter die apparel that we've got for sale. Uh, we got a lot of great new t-shirts in recently, including the one that I'm wearing along with a couple others. We got a new hooded sweatshirt. We got some great new hats in stock. So if you guys are interested in maybe some last minute Christmas gifts, make sure you check out bowhunting.com. Click on shop at the top of the page and in the drop down menu, you're going to want to click on bowhunting.com gear. Now with that out of the way, we want to hop right into Frankie Clark's hunt, which is a great November rut hunt. Actually took place the same day Todd shot his buck. And uh, this hunt right here is a great example of why you should always keep your rattling antlers with you in November. Well, it's uh, about one o'clock on November 15th. We are, uh, you know, I cut across this cornfield over here and uh, go to the bee tree. It's a tree we've had pretty good luck and success in, in the past. It's a uh, bunch of you Kansas here out in the middle of the open. You're only the only big tree out there, so you can see everything. Bring the horns with us and uh, do some rattling. 
this is where we had uh, the encounter with uh, that buck the other night and the uh, fertilizer truck run it off. So hopefully, uh, maybe they'll make it out to us this time. Made it, finally made it in the tree. We've seen three so far. We had three uh, deer come out in the food plot in the front. Pretty nice night, good wind. We've had a couple good encounters on this tree last year with a great big nine pointer. We're just gonna sit out here and hopefully uh, we'll get one to chase a doe or just come cruising through here. We've got a big scrape work right here in front of us, about 10 yards, 15 yards. So hopefully everything will work out. string. I ain't telling he's gonna come all the way out here. But... I rattled at him and he's coming across this big wide open field towards us now so. It's cow ripping dude. The deer that Clint's after. I kind of feel sorry but hopefully he'll make it out here to us. Let's get him buddy. Scrape at 21 yards. <laughs> Thanks so much, buddy. Uh, Rattled him in from like 600 yards, dude. Holy mumps. Uh, that was freaking awesome, man. God, we needed that. Come to the tree. We're, we're in the only trees in this whole freaking woods. Oh, Frank. I told you he heard you. Look at this. <laughs> oh. Well, we're going to try to get out of this tree without falling apart. Um, uh, I want to thank my buddy to his deer. This is his lease that I've hunted with him for, I don't know, six or seven years. This is a deer we had an encounter with the other morning. We didn't get killed, so. Thank you, Photograph, for uh, shooting one. That's t two for two, two years in a row. He shot one first, and I shot one after him. Look at these bad boys. Right there. That's why you have to use big horns. All right.
as you can see this scrape is just blowed open built this little food plot right here and we left this tree just for this reason it's great He didn't go very far. We watched him tip over right here in the grass. We've been waiting for this all year long. Big old heavy four or five year old deer. Just a beautiful deer. Big bases, big brow tines. This is him, isn't it? I ain't got splits or nothing. This is a deer actually that we had two encounters out of this tree last year. I put a stalk on out of in this little draw. Uh, we weren't for sure if it was uh, a deer that we were hunting or the nine pointer we call him. But we're pretty sure it's just it's the nine pointer. Um, he's a five year old deer. Great big old neck. Couldn't ask for a better hunt. Just come in perfect. We rattled at him. He's probably five or six hundred yards away. Had to hit the horns together really hard so you could hear him in the wind and he came on a string. I mean, running the whole way. Come to the tree, 21 yards. Put a great shot on him. Everything looks good on film. Great cameraman, great friend. So, that's what memories are, memories are made of, I guess. Great big Illinois whitetail. Bow hunter die. That was a pretty exciting hunt. I mean, anytime you can have a buck that big running in at you from 600 yards, you know, you're kind of thinking he's coming, but is he really going to give me a shot? And that one just played out perfect. Man. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. Well, I, and the fact that they were able to do an interview during the time that that buck is making it to them. I mean, I know I've been in those situations before where right. you're, you're, you're not sure what's going to happen, but my gosh, comes in, hits that scrape. I mean, that was some powerful footage. Yeah, it was a great hunt. And... You know, I, I guess, you know, it just shows us that the rut was probably a little late this year. I mean, normally November 15th, you're starting to taper off a little bit, but obviously things were rocking and rolling. I mean, that buck came in looking for a fight, you know, hit that scrape, and Frank was able to make a great shot at him. Right. And, and, you know, just talking to Clinton a little bit about this hunt, you know, it, it was nice to see Frankie in the, in the excitement that he has. I mean, he's not a very excitable guy, right? I mean, if anybody I wasn't ever, gonna say that. If but anyone's ever met him, him. He's, you know, he's he's just kind of you know even keel and kind of a mellow guy. But I, I have to admit, it was enjoyable to see him, uh, you know, so excited after shooting yeah. that deer. Well, and, and I know we didn't talk a lot about it, but you know, the rattle antlers. I mean, you know you're always torn. Do I bring him? Do I not bring him? I just snuck in here and I'm going to make all this noise. I mean, there is a perfect example where you get a buck with the right frame of mind, 600 yards away, and you hit those horns, he was committed. He yeah. was coming. And, and, and if they didn't have those, probably wouldn't happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm not a fan of blind calling a whole lot, but if you see a deer and he's not coming towards you, those rattling antlers could definitely make a difference. Fuck them in. So the next hunt is actually going to be... Uh, the very next time Clinton and Frank went out, this time Clinton's got the bow, Frankie's behind the camera. It's just one of those hunts they have a hot doe come in, and in November, a hot doe by your stand. Hey, don't tell them everything. Let's let them watch the hunt. <laughs> well, let's get to it. It's about 7 o'clock on the morning of November 18th. Well, it's the first time Frank and I have been back out since we killed that deer the other night, so we're still riding the high from that, but we're in here hunting the deer we call Cal Ripken. Uh, we know he's still in here. Uh, we had an encounter with him up the ridge here last week, and then we seen him out in the field. Uh, when we seen him out in the field a couple nights later, he only had one brow tine. I would assume that the big nine-pointer had been in here and they'd got into a little bit of a fight, so we think he's still in here. We've moved the stand back down the ridge. Uh, about a hundred yards to we could hunt it today with this west northwest wind so we're right above where he was standing the other day when he come up through here uh, I would say it ought to be pretty good the wind blew real bad yesterday uh, today it's supposed to lay a little bit this morning and blow pretty hard tonight so getting almost time for the orange army to come out so we're down to the wire here on getting one killed before gun season Pretty aggressive. 
aggressive, so we're gonna try to uh, get him to come back in up through here real quick. That's not exactly how we wanted that to play out. Uh, just didn't make the best shot when he got down here. Then it happened quick. He come blowing through here. We had a doe come out. She was running around. Frankie just said, man, I just hope we get a hot doe up in here. I don't know where he come from. There's a whole herd of bucks. He come up on this hill, he was growling come down the hill, I couldn't get him stopped. When I finally did, I just hit him back. I'm, I'm like the second rib up, I'd say, from the back, so. For sure, gut shot. Maybe, hopefully, we caught, caught a liver. He's, uh, he's definitely not feeling very well at all. We'll just uh, hang out here a little bit, then we'll back out, go home, watch the video come back in here tomorrow. All right, it's about 2.50. We're uh, headed back over to the farm to look for the deer. We definitely didn't get any guts. We hit him six or seven inches up into the chest cavity, but definitely in the cavity in front of his diaphragm. So we're gonna go check him out, see if we got one lung, if we got lucky. Uh, we can slide down in there and look pretty easily. The wind's blowing real hard, so. If we don't find him right off the bat and find some real promising looking sign, we'll back out and come back tomorrow. But we just felt like the way the shot looked, we ought to come back in this afternoon and see if we can find him. All right, well, we ain't got a lot of B-roll coming up here to get him. We kind of all spread out uh, looking for him. We had good blood coming up the hill. That was dark, I'd say probably liver and lung, we'll find, or liver and guts. We'll find out when we get up here. But me and my buddy Josh, we slid up here and Frank went around to the head of the draw. And, He's laying here dead right in his bed, so we haven't went up there and got him yet. Did the right thing by backing out and giving him some time. We had to go and call the landowner anyways. He, he did get across the fence. We weren't for sure if he would, but we wanted to make sure if he did, we were prepared for that, so let's go check him out. Couldn't be happier getting this deer. We've been hunting pretty hard. Uh, hard enough that we actually took a break and took a few days off and rested up. We were getting on each other's nerves pretty good, so we decided to back out a little bit. And boy, the other day we 
<clears throat> got fired back into it was Frank's deer and we took a couple days off after that. And first time back in the tree. So Frank and I have killed two deer in two hunts. I guess I just realized that. That's uh, that's pretty nice. So just a big four or five year old 10 pointer. I'd say he's in the 140 somewhere. So just thrilled to get him. That was a hell of an exciting hunt this morning with that doe come down through there and all them bucks running her. So just couldn't be happier. Well, one thing's for sure, Justin. I mean, it's November 18th, the rut is in full swing, and you and I both agree that the rut happened later this year. You know, we're always trying to predict these things during the year. Is it going to be earlier? Is it going to be later? You never know, but this is a classic hunt when you see all those deer coming in. He puts out that bellow. I mean, it was freaking cool. Yeah, I mean, and that's just one of those hunts that happened really fast where you oh, yeah. don't have a lot of pre-roll, which is almost the opposite of, of Frank's hunt that happened a couple days earlier. But like you said, I mean, the rut was a little bit late this year, which... I don't know what to believe anymore. I mean, we talked earlier in the year about how, you know, we're not putting a lot of stock in the moon anymore. And then, you know, you start all, believing back in the moon then. But all the moon guys said that the rut was going to be late, and yep. it clearly was this year. I mean, normally around the 18th of November, you're starting to see the rut taper down, Definitely. and you're starting to see some of those bucks, you know, increase their, their range looking for those last few hot mm -hmm. does. And in this case, I mean, five, six, seven bucks on a doe. I mean, usually that's like a November 7th to 10th type thing that you yeah, see. Yeah, right. So uh, definitely a little late this year. You know, as far as the shot, you know, a little bit low, a little bit far back. I mean, not terrible. Those guys did the right thing by Always. backing out. Back you know. out. You know, it's not going to save you 100% of the time, but the reality is just leaving it alone, coming back, don't do the nighttime searches. I mean, I, I personally, I'm done with those. I mean, I, I don't think the rest of my life I'm doing another nighttime search. I just think you just miss a lot of key details. But they did right. the right thing. They backed out, and that buck didn't go anywhere. Yeah, so another great hunt from Clinton Frank. Able to overcome some adversity this year. A lot of EHD in that area. Um, you know, I, you probably don't see it reflected so much in Clinton Frank's hunts here, but I mean, Tyler Rector's just been, you know, absolutely devastated by oh, the EHD man. in his area, and he's right down the street from those guys, you know, just hasn't been able to get on the deer. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, the Illinois deer population isn't what it used to be. Hopefully, we're going to see some regulation changes I hope next so. year. I hope so. So, with that said, Todd, let's get into this week's trophy photos that people sent in for us to take a look at. Carmela Collins. Aaron Isle. Aaron Barnes. And Jamie Olson. Hey, those are some great photos. We appreciate you taking the time to send them in. We get a lot of photos, and we do our best to get you up here on the show. So just keep tuning in. You'll never know when you'll be right here on the next episode of Bowhunter or Die. Well, guys, that's all the action we've got for this week's show. Now, Todd, end of December, which means late season hunting is in full swing. Obviously, we've talked about it a lot. Food is going to be key for sure. the late season. We got a lot of snow on the ground, you know, all over the country. We got snow on the ground. Yep. We got cold temperatures. So now is really when that hard work that you put in in the spring and in the summer is really going to pay off. Right. I mean, and, and really it comes down to colder than usual temperatures. I mean, right. honestly, I can't remember this cold of temperatures, you know, this early in the season, actually. So keep an eye on the weather. I mean, I personally, the colder the better. It's yeah. as simple as that. You know what? If I see a 30 degree day, actually, I was thinking about going this Saturday. That's calling for 30 degrees. Then they're calling for Sunday being three and then Monday being six. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going on Saturday. I'm going to focus on Sunday and uh, Monday because yeah. I know the deer are slaved to their stomachs this time of the year. And I, we know it's hard to get out there when it's single digit temperatures, but if you've got the food sources, that's when the deer are really going to be hitting them during the daylight. You know, those 30 degree days, they don't need to move quite so much. So a lot of times I'll wait until, you know, right at last light right. or into dark before some of those bigger bucks come out into the open. So before we go, Todd, I know that you wanted to bring up the bow shoot, which, you know, a couple months away yet, but guys, you got to start marking your calendars because you're not going to want to miss it. Oh, absolutely. We have a great time every year. We'd love to see you there. It, it, and listen, this is a fun shoot. You know what? This isn't about being a professional shooter. This is about bringing your bow, coming out, meeting the guys of the team, and having a great time. We hope to see you there. I believe it's the first Saturday. It is the first Saturday in June. Yep. Check our forum. I know they've already started an active post there. You can get all the details, and there's a lot of guys that will help you out with all the information. Yeah, we'd love to see everybody uh, who watches the show and who is able to make it out to the get-together come out this summer, shoot some bows with us, have a good time. So. Yeah, and, and not to interrupt you, Justin, but and if you take the time to pre-register, you get a free T-shirt for showing up. So Can't beat that, right? No. 
So Well, well hey, with that being said, the holiday season is upon us. We hope you have a great holiday. And more importantly, get that bow. Don't give up. There's still time left, and we want to see you be successful before this season's over. In the meantime, don't forget to check out facebook.com forward slash bowhunting for daily updates, news, photos, and other exciting information. We want to hear your opinions and your stories, so join us now and like us on Facebook. Well, with this next hunt, you're going to see with Clinton. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. He did, didn't, didn't. did that. We really take you with that. Just make sure you email us, and I don't know where I'm going right this second. So. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. That was really nice of Dave to stop by the booth. Now, for, uh, for the exciting hunts that they feature on that TV. Yeah, he says well, how he got